Does my Mythbuster recipe with an unfenced starter that saves you time and energy support the weight of heavy inclusions like blueberries? Join me in a side-by-side -side comparison and you will get the answer to whether you can use the Mythbuster recipe with inclusions. My name is Laura and welcome to Morning Dove Haven. Welcome back to my kitchen all. And if you're new here, welcome to my kitchen. One of my lovely subscribers very much wanted to have me publish an inclusion recipe. And for those of you who may be new to sourdough baking, inclusions are add-ins to your bread, such as nuts, seeds, or fruits. I made a sourdough inclusion recipe about two months ago that I absolutely fell in love with blueberry lemon sourdough boule. It is just so fantastic. I have to have a loaf in my refrigerator at all times. <laughs> and I have a feeling you might feel the same way once you taste this. The taste and the texture is so lovely. Since creating my unfed starter, no preheated oven Dutch oven recipe, I wondered if it would support inclusions. In particular, heavy ones like blueberries, which have the weight from their hydration. So I thought if my Mythbuster recipe would hold up to the blue le <laughs> blueberry lemon recipe, that would be icing on the cake for me because of how much I love the taste of this bread. So today I will be sharing with you my step-by-step, side-by-side comparison of the making of the blueberry lemon sourdough boule two ways. One, with my Mythbuster recipe, which contains the unfed inactive starter and a cold oven and a cold Dutch oven. And the other with the original recipe that I found online by the sourdough lady. As you see here, there is the unfed starter. It's been sitting out on my island for about an hour after I took it out of the refrigerator. And coming out of my barely warm oven, I keep it in my starter in there when I am uh, feeding it and getting it active with the light on in the oven for just a little bit. And this is Stella my starter and she's very happy right now after being fed. I just began my sourdough journey not long ago in November of 2023 and I've loved this process so much. I'm still learning something new, multiple things every day. So this video will be a clear step-by-step -step tutorial that I feel beginners will find helpful. If you've been working longer with sourdough, perhaps there will be something new for you here, or please feel free to skip right ahead. The videos I plan to make in the near future are going to be more concise and with varied topics that I do hope you will love. Here we're starting out with uh, measuring the temperature of the water for the first recipe we're going to be putting together and that is the original blueberry lemon recipe by the sourdough lady and 
making sure that it's warm enough and we will add that to the blue striped bowl and that will be the marker indicating that recipe and uh, the white bowl that you see to the right that will contain my myth buster recipe so in goes 350 grams of water and you want to make sure that that is warm and the next addition we're going to put in the very active starter 100 grams and it's very active and you see how it is floating on the top of the water indicating it's ready it is active to use go ahead and mix that up well and by the way do feel free to jump ahead uh, to whatever part of the video that you would like to get to. Um, it is a lengthy video. It was important with uh, showing the side-by-side -side comparison and uh, especially helpful for beginners um, in getting this step-by-step -step process and getting more and more comfortable with each loaf of bread made. So as you see, we added 500 grams of all-purpose flour. And then mix that up well. Then add your 10 grams of salt and mix that up well. After mixing the dough until shaggy, go ahead and cover that up and you're gonna let it rest for one hour. Next, we're going to begin mixing up the Myth Buster recipe. And we're gonna start with 340 grams of water at 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna pour that into a large bowl And next to that, we're going to add our 110 grams of unfed, inactive sourdough starter. And if you look closely, you see it's very different than the active, thin, runny, it sinks. Go ahead and mix that up well, and then add 300 grams of all-purpose flour. And then to that we'll be adding 200 grams of bread flour.
Now we're going to mix the ingredients together until it's a shaggy dough. Be sure not to over mix. And then we're going to let that sit covered for about 15 minutes. To the mixture, we're adding 10 grams of salt. I like to use a brand called Redmond, Redmond Real Salt. And it has, uh, it's very pink and it has flecks of black in it. Uh, someone thought it was pepper at one point, but no, that's not pepper. It is uh, just the type of salt. And I just like to kind of punch it in there with my knuckles at first, and then you want to fold it in and get it... Uh, mixed in well to the dough. And by the way, I do have links in the description below that uh, are for the Redmond Real Salt, if you're interested in trying that, as well as some other of the um, tools that I use in the video, the bowl scrapers and such. So we're starting stretch and folds here. We're going to be doing four stretch and folds and then cover the bowl and let it sit about 15 to 30 minutes covered. And that will be out in room temperature or in a, a mildly warm spot. And um, we're gonna do that four times. So I'm doing that with each recipe. This is the original blueberry lemon recipe that sat for one hour and rested and now I am uh, beginning the stretch and folds on this dough. Now we're gonna set that aside again. In between stretch and folds, I decided I would go ahead and work on the rest of the ingredients. And both recipes, they get the same uh, ingredients here. And that would be the blueberries. And you can put in as many as you would like. Beautiful blueberries. And then the lemons. You're going to uh, put the zest of one lemon into your recipe. So since I have two breads going at once, I've got the two lemons and one quarter cup of sugar into each recipe. My experience has showed me uh, that for me, one quarter cup of sugar isn't quite enough. I made the mistake by adding too much in one of my loaves and it really brought out the flavor of the lemon even more so. Uh, however, it did make for a very wet dough and it was very messy underneath, but, um, but I did put a, a lot more than a half a cup. <laughs> so um, anyway, next time I'm going to be trying a half a cup of sugar, maybe a third. I'll, I'll, I'll start out that way, a third a cup. And yes, I'm sneaking in a little bit of lemon juice. <laughs> It really didn't make much of a difference though. I was hoping it would, uh, cause I just love, love that lemon flavor. I would suggest that you don't do what I did here. Um, so like I said, while uh, I wanted to be efficient with my time 
while I was working on two loaves of bread at once, and I wanted to prepare the lemon zest and sugar in, in advance. However, that turned out not to be a good idea because then it was just all very thick and chunky when I went to put it um, onto the dough later on in the video, as you'll see. So I would uh, highly recommend that um, just wait until uh, you're about to start uh, laminating your dough before you go ahead and make your lemon zest and sugar mixture. So here I am uh, doing modified coil folds, very modified. <laughs> uh, both of these uh, balls of dough are a bit more on the stiff side, if you will, not quite as loose and pliable. So um, even though these are coil folds by picking up, and allowing one end to go down into the bowl first and then uh, fold over the other side. Um, I had to manipulate it a little bit more myself to make that process happen. Coil folds were not a part of the recipe, but uh, I do, I work a lot by instinct. I've mentioned before in my videos and uh, I go by feel a lot. So. Um, someone might look at this and think, well, those really weren't necessary, but A, I really love working with the dough. Um, the more time the dough is in my hands, <laughs> gently, the better. Um, and then uh, I just really feel that uh, it needed it. So... By all means, you can just do the stretch and folds, or you can also work those modified coil folds as well. Hi everyone, I just wanted to chat a minute about um, the lamination that you're going to be seeing come up. Um, so I had a couple of viewers in a previous video make a comment about when I was laminating with another recipe uh, that I use a lot of flour and they suggested working on my countertop and just a light coating of water and then place the dough down and a bowl of water to dip your fingers into to prevent the stickiness and it doesn't stick to the surface of your countertop. Uh, what you'll be seeing, the original blueberry lemon recipe with the water method. I went and used uh, the flour method that I tend to use with my recipe, the Mythbuster. And um, so you'll be able to see the two different ways of doing the lamination process, either with water on your countertop or working with flour. I'll be interested to see what you think you would prefer and you probably will be able to see which method I prefer um, when you watch uh, the video coming up. If you comment below, I would love to hear it. And if you have any tips or tricks related to this process as well, I would love to hear them. And I'm sure sharing this with everyone would be of big help and we all can learn from each other. Enjoy the rest of the video. So both doughs have been bulk fermenting now for two to three hours. And they look really, really beautiful. Let 
this dough is the one that is the original blueberry lemon boule recipe. It's got some beautiful bubbles in there. And then this is my Mythbuster recipe. And it also has some lovely bubbles in there. Even with an inactive starter. And it's lamination time, so we want to prepare our Benetton baskets with some flour. I just use all-purpose flour. If you don't have Benetton baskets, by the way, you can certainly use a colander with a piece of linen laying in the bottom of it, or a dish towel, um, and make sure to flour it, uh, or even just a bowl. Um, and if you are interested in getting yourself Benetton baskets. Again, I do have a link down below in the description for that. So here I have prepared my granite countertop with a damp surface. I put some water down as I'm getting ready to laminate the dough and as you see here the lemon got very chunky as I mentioned earlier so I do not recommend preparing that lemon sugar in advance and here is the original blueberry boule recipe and I am working this dough laminating it with wet fingertips on a wet surface. This is my first time trying this and it definitely had a different feel to it. I personally found that um, it seemed um, to almost slide back into position um, each time I would try to pull on the dough, um, stretch it into position, I would get it there and then it would just ever so slowly on the wet counter kind of start to slide back in. Um, didn't quite give me the feel of real control over the dough. So perhaps there's a special technique about it that if um, someone watching you know, could recommend or or knows about, please share with us in the comments. That would be fantastic. And we certainly do appreciate um, learning from each other.
And now we're just folding this dough into thirds. And I struggled quite a bit here. Um, the dampness of the dough from the water on the surface kind of gave me some trouble. And it didn't fold over the way I wanted. Um, and it just, it just didn't feel right. So I was not exactly a happy camper right now. <laughs> I was getting a little frustrated, I have to admit. Um, it also it gave me the feel that the blueberries were going to pop through, but they didn't. I mean, I think maybe one did, but one popped through on the other ball of dough too, so I don't think it was the hydration part. And now it's time to laminate my Mythbuster recipe and see how it holds up to the inclusions. This made me feel a lot more comfortable working with the flour again. And um, I was very satisfied with being able to manipulate the dough the way I wanted to and get it into the shape that I wanted as well. It just seemed a lot easier to manage. Uh, but a game changer for me was using the flour and doing the lamination on my granite countertop. So uh, again, I've learned a lot and that was another tip that I'm so uh, appreciative of. Uh, uh, some of the viewers had put in the comments of a couple of videos to uh, do the lamination on my countertop and not on the butcher block and it really was uh, made a huge difference. Adding the mixture of the sugar and the lemon zest, you want to add uh, about two thirds of um, the bowl onto the large laminated area, saving about a third of it or a quarter of it for after you have gone and um, folded your dough into thirds and save that last bit for across the top before you roll the whole ball of dough up.
So after a letting your ball of dough sit for 10, 20 minutes, you want to give that skin a little tightening. So we're going to go and turn that dough on the countertop and work on sealing that bottom a little more as well as tightening the skin on top to prepare for, um, for scoring. The bottom of each of these bowls really didn't seal well. I'm not exactly sure why, um, but that's uh, a learning process for me as well with inclusions to get them to tighten up better um, on the underside. But go ahead and pinch them as you see here. Pinch them closed. I added flour to help to get that um, to stay closed and then place it in your refrigerator for 12 to 24 hours um, and let them be happy in the fridge until you are ready to bake. And here it is the next morning and we're going to take out those beautiful balls of dough. Take a look at them and get ready for scoring. They are both just so beautiful. So we're gonna turn that out onto our parchment paper and then we will flower the top of each of them and score both of them. My Mythbuster recipe, uh, that dough will go into the uh, cold oven and then I will set that oven to 450 degrees. The Dutch oven, as you will see, will also be cold. I can handle it without any mitts on.
Now it's time to place the Dutch oven um, into the already preheated oven because the other loaf, my loaf, is already baking. But we're preparing this Dutch oven, the blue one, to be good and hot and ready for the other original blueberry lemon recipe. I will be pinning the recipe for my uh, Myth Buster Bowl with the blueberry lemon inclusions um, into the comments below. And if you don't see it there, then that means that I got tech savvy enough to know how to place a Google document uh, in the description and you can click on the recipe there. Two beautiful loaves of bread. The 
This is the unfed. And here on the left is the fed active starter. my recipe and here you see an incredible loaf of bread in front of you. It is soft, it is moist, it is just a lovely, lovely loaf of bread. here, a beautiful loaf of bread without having to spend four hours or more waiting for your starter to grow, and you do not have to preheat your oven an hour in advance and wasting time and energy, and you also don't have to run the risk of burning yourself by placing your dough into a 500 degree Dutch oven. So this makes me so very happy that uh, my recipe withstands the weight of these inclusions. And here, another beautiful loaf of bread. This is the original blueberry lemon recipe that I used from the sourdough lady. Absolutely stunning. The choice is yours. They both came out so, so good. I will also put more blueberries in next time. I couldn't be happier to share these results with you. And please do tell me what you think of it in the comments. I'm so happy to share this information with you and that now you know that you can use my Mythbuster recipe and add inclusions and you will have beautiful outcomes with your bread. Now you have time saving, energy saving, and safety. What happened to me with my bread lamb, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put it up here. Getting injured by that, it was a freak accident. And um, so if you uh, wait to the end of the video here, you'll be able to click on my playlist so if you're new to bread baking, sourdough bread baking, my whole playlist is at the end and you can learn about making starters or whatever information you might need up until now, as well as at any time, if you have enjoyed this video, found value in it, if you would like and subscribe to my channel and share my channel with others, it really makes a difference. I can't thank you enough for all of your support already for everyone who has subscribed. If you would like as well, coming up next, I have some tranquil Montana moments of footage to share with you. I've done it in a couple of my other videos and my viewers have really enjoyed that. So I hope you enjoy that. Have a beautiful day and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.